Fresh, lively, bold. Ceviche fronterizo. Welcome back to my kitchen. We're returning to some of the Frontera Grill classics, things that have been on our menu for 37 years. And today, it's ceviche, what you'll see on our menu as listed as ceviche fronterizo, frontera style ceviche, because it is so associated with our restaurant. And I'm gonna show you exactly how we make it. First of all, you need some fresh fish. You need uh, that kind of fish that people would call sashimi grade because it's not going to get cooked by heat. It's going to get sort of cooked by acid, but still you need the absolute freshest fish you can get. So you go to your fish market and you ask for sashimi quality ocean fish. You don't really want to be making this with lake fish for a number of reasons, but I'm not going to go into those. Just choose an ocean fish. You might want to make it out of halibut, which is very delicious. Snapper, grouper, all of those make really great ceviche as long as they're fresh. How do you know if it's really fresh? Well, number one, I use my nose. <laughs> I smell the fish. And if it smells like the ocean, then it's going to be really fresh. If it smells like an old fish market, I would pass on that. Secondly, you look at it and you see if it's gleaming. If it's got a beautiful luster to it, then it's probably really fresh fish. If it is sort of dried out looking, pass on that one as well. So use your nose and use your eyes. You can also use your fingers. Touch the fish. If it dents in and the dent stays, well, it's old fish. If it just pops right back up, sort of like uh, bread dough when it has risen beautifully, then you know it's going to be fresh fish. So what I'm using here is albacore tuna. Now it's a very lean meat and we like to eat tuna rare. So I'm gonna actually make a kind of rare ceviche because that's what we do in our restaurant. Other ones you may wanna like let it soak longer and be a little bit more well done. I'm gonna cut this albacore tuna into pieces that are a little smaller than a half an inch and I'm gonna finely chop a white onion. Okay, all of the cut up fish goes into a bowl. You, I always say stainless steel bowl or a glass bowl because we're gonna put a lot of acid on here and you don't want anything that would possibly react in any way. I'm not really fond of using plastic bowls here, but you could get away with it if that's the only thing that you have. Onion goes on top and then I've squeezed a whole bunch of fresh lime. I will tell you, fresh lime is everything when making ceviche. It's what's gonna give it that really beautiful, fresh flavor. Don't use the bottle stuff for this. I mean, you've invested in a lot of good fish here. Why wreck it with bottled lime juice? Now you want enough lime. This will take, a, for one pound of fish, it'll take a generous cup. You want to pour on enough, looks like it's going to take all of that, to have this fish float freely. That's what you're looking for there. Mix the onion into it. The onion will slightly pickle in the lime juice, which I really, really love there. And then I'm going to refrigerate this for 20 minutes. That will still leave this tuna really quite rare, but I'm going to refrigerate it just for 20 minutes. You may want yours to go a little bit longer than that. Now, I know you heard me say several times albacore tuna. And we've chosen albacore tuna for the classic Frontera ceviche because our restaurant is very, very dedicated to sustainable seafood. And albacore is in good supply. When you're going to buy the fish for your ceviche, please stay away from things like bluefin tuna. Yes, yellowfin is okay. It's sort of okay. But if you have a chance to get albacore and you like that texture of, uh, of tuna for your ceviche like we do, then 
choose the albacore. Now, back to the recipe. Okay, you can see here that the fish is starting to turn a sort of pale color. It doesn't have the redness of raw fish, but not a ton. That's actually what I'm looking for in this style of ceviche. That very barely, barely marinated ceviche is really my favorite one, but especially when I'm working with tuna. Okay, so I'm going to tip off the lime juice now. It's done as much of the work as I want it to do. So I'm just tipping it off like this, but I'm going to leave a couple of tablespoons in there because I want it to season the dish. So scoop all of that in there because we need a bigger bowl now to mix everything in with. Okay, so here are all the other ingredients that we're going to work with here. Green chili, of course, we need a little bit of spice. I'm going to chop that up. I'm going to chop up a little bit of cilantro here. Um, I've already chopped up some tomatoes. Um, I'll, I will tell you that during the winter time, we work really hard in our restaurant to get beautiful red tomatoes, but sometimes the best ones that we can lay our hands on are cherry tomatoes. So I've sort of coarsely chopped cherry tomatoes here, and then we're going to add all of that and season. Seasoning ceviche is one of the things that you have to learn about, and I will get to that once we get everything chopped up and in the bowl. Okay, the chopped tomatoes that I talked about, chopped cilantro, chopped green chili, and this last thing is olives. Now that may surprise you, but I fell in love with the ceviche over in the state of Veracruz when I was living in Mexico, and everyone that I went to taste had olives in it. So that's why olives are part of this recipe. Now we're going to be making the type of ceviche that you don't serve in a glass, but you serve piled on a tostada. That's one of my favorite ways to eat it. And so we are going to make that drier style of ceviche. I'm going to just simply scrape all of this into the bowl. It's all been measured and weighed according to the, a variety, the way that we do it in our restaurants. And I'm going to grab a spoon to stir everything together. Remember that those olives, I'm using a type of green olive. In Mexico, they use green olives for this kind of thing all the time. Um, manzanilla olives are the common one there. What we use in our restaurant is a slightly larger green olive that I have right there that has this incredibly robust flavor. So it carries through in a really nice way. Now, I would always suggest at this point that you give your ceviche a little taste because the olives are going to add some saltiness to it. Of course, that lime juice is really tangy. The, you need to know where you're starting from. This one is really robust in the tanginess of the lime juice. I'm getting heat from that chili. I'm getting a little brininess from the olives that are in there. Now, this is the place where you have to train your palate because you have to get enough salt in here to balance that liminess. Uh, it may sound odd, but lots of people are really, they confuse those things in their mind. Okay, so I'm going to give, uh, give you some measurements to start with here. I'm using diamond crystal salt, so it's really a large flake. So we're going to put in here about a teaspoon and a half of that. So if you're working with fine ground salt, you're gonna to wanna to start with a little less than a teaspoon. And then add that and stir it until it's very well dissolved and give it another little taste here. Just see what it did to put that much salt in there. Cause suddenly the acid is balanced beautifully. Now, for some people, they would like to have a little bit of sweetness in there to balance the acidity of the lime juice too. So I would suggest that you start with 
a teaspoon of salt, taste it. I know that my preference is for about two teaspoons of, of sugar here in this um, to give, to bring out the natural sweetness of the tomatoes that are in here. I think it sort of balances everything a little bit more. So mm, now I've got a whole symphony of flavors going on here. Maybe you don't want to add that little bit of sugar to it. But I'm going to encourage that everybody to put a good dose of olive oil in here. So a couple tablespoons or so of olive oil um, will add a creaminess to it. Again, it's going to be a slightly different style than the ceviche you would serve in a, in a cup. Um, those are usually really focused on the acid, but on a tostada, on a chip, well, I like the, the creaminess that's added by that olive oil. Final taste here before we go to the plating, just to make sure that everything is exactly where I want it. Mm. That's a really elegant ceviche. Okay, next I'm going to show you how to plate it. Okay, I've got three options for you. Uh, the large tostadas, the ones that you could buy at the Mexican grocery store, or you could fry them yourself from tortillas. Um, I've got chips here, just regular chips, so you want to get some really sturdy ones, not super thin ones, preferably from a local tortilleria. And then I have these sort of fancy ones that we use at our restaurant, which are cut from a special tortilla, but they're cut to be long and really beautiful. So if you want to do that kind of thing, I was just going to show you how you cut them. This is a special tortilla that is made for frying. This is not the kind that you would have with your meal at the table or to make tacos out of unless they were going to be the rolled and fried ones. So what you do with this guy is that you cut um, uh, these long triangles out of it. Usually you can get about three good ones out of this and then you can just fry up the rest of this here so when you fry them they'll have a little cup shape to them especially if you keep pushing them down in the oil and that will give you these really pretty ones over here so now my next step is to pile this ceviche onto each one of these and then you could serve it just like this. The smaller ones, of course, are better if you're going to do it as a sort of past appetizer um, in front in it before a, a big meal. Okay, last one here. Now you could make your ceviche um, an hour or two before your guests arrived, but boy, fresh is best when you're talking about ceviche. So don't make it too far in advance. Here's to some really great ceviche.